Hello, welcome to another Reaper blog video. This is what's new in Reaper 6.09. We're also gonna catch up on some stuff from 6.06 .06 and 6.08. Let's jump into it. So first we've got something for the Mac operating system in preferences, general, advanced, option to disable mouse wheel swipe move throttling. So let's have a look at that. Open up the preferences, go to the general page, click on this advanced UI system tweaks. Some new options here for throttling mouse events. I can't remember if these are on or off by default, but I would suggest having them off. This is something that can affect the speed of movement with the mouse in Reaper. Uh, this is a Mac only preference. So for an example of this, here's mouse wheel with throttle events on and So there's kind of like a minimum maximum speed for this. And with this turned off, these tracks are expanding much faster. The mouse wheel moves a lot faster. Up next is something for the ruler. There's a new mouse modifier for copying regions without copying contents. So I'm gonna put in a region here like that. And I'm gonna hold down the command option key on Mac, but that's control alt on Windows and we can copy a region, keeping its color, keeping its name, keeping the length uh, without moving around any of the contents. And that also does not shift any stuff further in time. So here's a normal uh, command drag. It shifts everything over and it duplicates that region and holding command option, dragging, it only does the region, not the contents below the region. Up next is a change from 6.08. Media Explorer optionally apply preview volume when inserting media item. So we're gonna open up the options for the Media Explorer. I just right click in an empty area here. We can find apply preview volume to inserted media item. So I'll turn that on and I'll play a uh, sample here. Can turn that down. So if I insert this now, right here, it should insert with a volume of minus 12, which is the same as the preview volume in Media Explorer. And that just avoids any volume jumps with that option turned off. You could preview it at um, some value. When you import it, it plays it at the full volume which is probably much louder uh, than you were previewing it. So that's another really nice but small change to Reaper. Another change from 6.08, there's a new action to clear the tempo envelope. So I've got my tempo envelope uh, visible on the master track. I just go to view menu, tempo envelope. And so anytime there's a tempo change in the project, there is uh, a line and uh, envelope point that affects that. So if we open up the action list and search for clear tempo, we've got this new action here, clear tempo envelope. That will reset all of your uh, tempo and meter changes, um, whether they're in the ruler or in the uh, tempo envelope. Moving on to changes in 6.09, uh, the Ninjam plugin actually got a bunch of changes. Um, it's become a lot more popular since everyone is stuck at home and everyone still wants to jam with their, their bands. Uh, so this plugin has become a lot more popular uh, recently and they've just done some updates. So if I have the Ninjam plugin console uh, visible, if we go to the file menu or the channels menu, uh, we see new keyboard shortcuts here. So for example, uh, command shift M will mute the master, command M will mute the metronome. So that's pretty sweet. Shortcuts for connecting, for adding a local channel, um, selecting local channels, all this kind of stuff. If you are a user of Ninjam, you're gonna really like this stuff. Uh, besides the keyboard shortcuts, they've added uh, improved chat display accessibility, improving voice chat playback latency, and options to send local channels and metronome to separate outputs. 
And that last one is right here, route local channels to VST outputs three and four and route metronome v to VST output five. Moving on from that, we've got some changes for recent projects list. So again, that's in the file menu, recent projects. And the default is to have the path of the project listed. And so these are my, my last uh, 10 or 15 uh, projects. So if we open up the preferences and go to the first page, general, down here at the bottom, maximum projects in recent project list, 15. And there's this new option, show file part before path. So I'm gonna enable that and hit okay. Let's go back to our recent projects list. And here's the difference. And you see it looks a little bit different. We've got the name of the project, a dash, and then the full path for the project. And here's another new thing for the recent projects list. If we attempt to open a project that doesn't exist, it's going to give us the option to remove it from the list. And this is a great thing. So I have this project file not found notification here. And if we choose yes, we'll remove that reference from the project list. And now if I go into the recent projects list, that one is not here. In the render to file window, there's a new wildcard for file count. And the file count wildcard shows the total number of rendered files in this batch. They've also updated the wildcard help documentation. So in here, we've got a lot more explanation of what every uh, wildcard does and all the character substitutions and things like that that we can do within the file names in the render to file window. We open up the preferences and search for ruler. There's a new preference to adjust ruler label horizontal spacing. Preferences appearance, ruler label spacing. And so if we have a look in the ruler, we can um, adjust this. And this does change in real time. You don't have to apply the preference first. Left for more markings on the ruler, and we bring it to the right for fewer markings on the ruler. So if I zoom in here, pretty close. This is, this is showing um, ruler, ruler markers for every, um, every four bars for measures. And as we bring this to the center, it's, it's giving us every two. And uh, all the way to the left, it's showing every ruler marker um, within 16 bars. Looks like this. And now the big new change is take markers. They've added the ability to add markers to your takes. And uh, these are separate from the ruler. You know, they, they don't have any relation to the project time. There aren't any default keyboard shortcuts for this. You can find this in the take menu, uh, take markers, add or edit take marker at cursor. You can delete at cursor and delete all from the item. So I'll just add in one here, brings up a little window. And in here, we can give this a name, let's say bad note. As an example, um, depending on the theme you're using, it's going to default to some color, which you could set in um, the theme tweaker to set your default. Mine is yellow, but we can change the color here. So I can make this green. Or I can make this blue you know, something to add contrast between the item color and the take uh, marker color. So I hit OK. We can drag this around. This doesn't change the audio in any way. This is just a marker. And if we have multiple markers in similar positions, so let, let's put this here, and I'll put one here. I filtered the action list by take marker within quotes. and. Um, you can see all of the relevant actions here. So I'm going to add in a take marker at edit cursor position. I'll just type in bad. And you can see here how the take names, take uh, marker names will overlap and stack. And, um, and it works pretty well for legibility. As long as the, uh, the track height is large enough to display those. So it's kind of like a minimum amount for the stacking of the names. With the action quick add take marker at play position or edit cursor, that's gonna bypass that window popping up and naming. 
So you can use this during playback or recording, mark up your takes as they're happening. You can come back to specific spots and keep all your markers for this t- that relate to this take within the take rather than cluttering up your ruler with all kinds of project markers. So there isn't any mouse modifiers that we can adjust. There's no preference page for mouse modifiers with take markers, but you could assign, let's say to media item, bottom half, command shift will add in a take marker. Command shift, click on the bottom, will add in a take marker like that. If we hold down the alt key, you can delete a take marker. So alt click deletes. Command or control on Windows drag will duplicate a take marker. Holding shift and dragging will bypass the snapping. So very much like dragging items, you can bypass the snap. And command shift will uh, copy plus bypass the snapping. And the last thing I'll show you with take markers is in the jump to window, which um, I've got set up on command J. I think the default might be J, uh, but you can always get to that by searching the action list. Uh, It's a really useful window. So command J, we can type in K and then the name of the take marker, which was say bad. And so that's gonna jump to the take marker named bad. Let's put in a new one here using the shortcut we set up earlier. So let's call this one hello. And so if I'm if I've got my cursor here, jump to window K hello, and that's gonna jump to that take marker right there. That works awesome. So that's it for what's new in Reaper 6.09. Lots of little stuff, but it's all great. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.